Hey guys, today we're going to be modeling this dry wash and desert hills that is going on the layout to represent Steamboat Springs, Nevada on the Virginia and Truckee Railroad. The scene is fairly straightforward, but we'll walk through several scenery concepts and techniques I use when putting together scenery for the layout. There will be lots of tips, tricks, and shortcuts along the way. And welcome to Model Railroading Made Simple. So first disclosure to start, we're not going to try to outdo the venerable Luke Toe on here. It would be a waste of our time to try. But the title of this series is Model Railroading Made Simple, so we'll try to do just that. Make the scenery steps as painless as possible, which means following the principles of KISS, not the rock band. The goal is also to have a finished scene in a couple of hours, and keep our model railroading on a budget. If you watched the last videos on signaling, the budget may have went out the window but we'll try to reel it in here a little bit. The scenery base is simply plaster cloth over a cardboard mesh. This tends to leave visible cardboard contours, but those will be hidden and smoothed out as we go along. Everybody has their favorite recipe for scenery plaster. It's a simple formula. One cup of plaster for one spoonful of tint. You can use tinting powder as I have done here, or acrylic paint from your hardware store that you can get by the gallon. Pick an earthly color, it's just a bit darker than what you're looking for. Mold a scene is optional if you want to add some texture. I skipped it since we'll be putting our own rocky dirt down later. Finally, you'll need water and white vinegar to retard the plaster from setting up too fast. Put the vinegar in after watering your plaster. Go easy on the water and vinegar to start. I use a stiff brush to mix everything up and apply in small sections. You can hear the vinegar reacting with a satisfying carbon bubble fizz as it breaks up the plaster. Now we'll paint it on, starting with our edges. Notice the color is considerably darker than when it dries. Take your time and be sure to fill any holes in the plaster, and build up any areas that need more texture. Be sure to protect any layout or carpet below your plaster cloth, because the plaster will find a way through while you're working. It's time to add some more white vinegar to the mix. Only vinegar will help us now. Water won't break up the plaster, so don't bother adding water. Just a splash of vinegar is all we need to extend our mix until it starts to harden up again. Now with the plaster coat done, it's time to put on some ground cover. We'll be using real dirt from the location modeled and a tan tile grout. But you can also use plaster as well. First, put some dirt in a mixing bowl. Then, add two to three spoonfuls of your grout or plaster to the dirt. We need to lighten the dirt because it will naturally darken when we glue it to the seam. I sift the grout to make it as fine as possible. You can really see the difference between the original and mixed dirt. Here we go! I use an old shaker to apply the dirt evenly and efficiently. Don't forget to keep scenery material off your track and switches. For the sloped scenery, it helps to wet the surface first, either with water and glue, plain water, or like here, my alcohol water mixture. Keep applying dirt and water over areas that don't look natural you'll get some natural looking erosion effects the more times you layer the process. I use a large makeup brush for ballasting as well as keeping dirt clear. Now I'm using white glue and water to provide a sticky surface for more layers of dirt and to start to cement things down. I'll touch up the ballast at this stage as well so it looks like the ballast came after the dirt, rather than the other way around. The makeup brush really makes ballasting a breeze. We'll use alcohol and water again to set the ballast before applying a final coat of glue. If you spray it just with water, sometimes the ballast will disperse or fly off in the wrong place. I've added some larger rocks and debris to the dry wash, and that will get glued down with the next pass. As you can see, things are starting to take shape already. Now it's time for some vegetation. Here's a sampling of some products and tools that I use. A static grass applicator and various shades of static grass 
and several types of foliage. The static grass applicator is homemade from a bug zapper. Cost is around $12 instead of $80 for a hobby applicator. But beware, there is nothing to stop you from electrocuting yourself or your friends. Spray your glue mixture and immediately shake on a base coat of grass, holding the charged tip against any part of your layout. Next, come through with a shop vac and tease the static grass upward. Be careful not to rip out chunks of ground cover. Everything still looks a bit too uniform. Now's a good time to study your backdrop again and add in some of the textures and colors from the real location you're modeling. I'll squirt a little glue, then dab some static grass right from my fingertips onto the glue to add grass tufts to the scene. Use a variety of colors, taking note of your photo backdrop for reference. See my photo backdrop series for how this is accomplished. Now we'll add some bushes and shrubs to our dry wash. The green color accents imply spring or summer, or it may have rained recently. It's time to spruce up the static grass again with the vacuum. After a few more grass tufts along the wash, I added a couple of Scenic Express dead oak trees I had to give a little more visual interest to the scene. If we were adding water to the scene, I would use Envirotex Light, which is a good value, is easy to mix, and has a nice long work time. It also dries fairly fast in about 24 hours. Last, I'll just touch up this plaster tunnel casting with a brown wash. And we're done. Not bad for a few hours work. We can always add hikers or other details later on. Thanks for watching and keep it on the rails. After a few more grass turds, 